What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this Fallout 76 Top 10 Legendary Weapons video. This has been a long, long overdue one. I'll be covering weapons that you can still get in the game from a drop or by spending script at the purveyor. The reason why I put some emphasis on that can still is because, well, I'm not going to be covering any legacies. That's why. Now, I, I can't help it if one of these actually gets taken out in the future and one of these that I'm covering actually becomes a legacy. But at the moment of the date of me uploading this, you can still get all of these in the game. Just trying to make that clear. They're just more rare than your usual. Let's just say that much. And are going to be pretty expensive if you're going to be trying to purchase them with caps. My goal out of making this is to hopefully help give more players, especially newer ones, a sense of direction of what to be keeping an eye out for. I know a lot of you already know about the unstoppable monster deathclaw gauntlet that you can get from completing the survival challenge if you don't well yeah this thing is a beast and yeah you get it from a survival challenge this weapon is just more well known so on that note in this list i'm going to be trying to have a variety not everything be bloodied and being sure that i add weapons that are definitely worth it to grind for just all depends on your build really so let's go ahead and jump into this we'll be starting this off with the furious mole miner gauntlet first off if you don't know what the furious effect does that makes it so as you can see damage is increased after each consecutive hit on the same target and this combined with the 40 percent faster swing speed that is on this gauntlet makes this one deadly combination because your damage is continuing to increase after each consecutive hit that you land and that plus one strength that this has makes this one one of the best of its kind the reason why a lot of melee players actually like to look for that plus one strength for the third effect is because it actually increases your melee damage not tremendously, but every little bit counts. And keep in mind, this footage that I'm showing you right now over this Furious Mole Miner Gauntlet is with no food or aid buffs. So, as you can see, this thing can be a monster. Also, be sure, if you are messing around with the Mole Miner Gauntlet, to modify it with the Extra Blade mod. It helps with damage, which you can get that by dismantling Mole Miner Gauntlets. Just like how you get a lot of other modifications for other weapons. You have to dismantle the specific weapon over and over to get the modifications for that specific weapon. Up next, I have for you the Medic Shotgun. This can be potentially a pretty solid legendary weapon to get your hands on. In case you don't know what the medic's effect does, that makes it so Vat's crits will heal you and your group. And the other good effect on this weapon is Vat's critical shots do plus 50% more damage. Now with a solid Vat's build, you potentially have the chance to keep Vatsing all of your enemies. And that will make it so you'll keep healing, which kind of makes you unstoppable in a way. At least in PvE, this can be a very helpful weapon to get your hands on. As you can see here with this footage, your health definitely stays up. Not only is it going to be healing you, it's also going to be healing your group too, which is pretty handy. Okay, so eighth up here on the list, I'm going to be showing you all a weapon that is highly, highly underrated. This is, I believe, the fastest two-handed weapon that you can get in Fallout 76. And that is the spear, believe it or not. As you can see here, this one's bloodied and it has a 40% faster swing speed and a plus one strength. This is a god tier spear. By saying that, I mean it's one of the best of its kind. That plus one strength is what you want to look for on top of that swing speed with two-handed weapons in my opinion. All depends on your build really on whether or not you want the bloodied effect though. Most players do, I will mention. And it's for a good reason. Bloodied builds are extremely powerful. It says it has a swing speed of medium and keep in mind this is a two-handed weapon so it's going to be for two-handed builds. And What's also neat about this weapon, you get some different animations when you swing it. Sometimes you'll be stabbing the opponent, other times you'll just be whacking the opponent. Either way, it's pretty interesting how it switches up like that. It makes it feel more unique. But yeah, like I mentioned before, this is a highly underrated melee weapon, and if you are a two-handed build, this is something you might want to get your hands on and test out and see if you like it for yourself. Overall, it's solid. Okay, the seventh up here, I have for you another two-handed weapon, except this time it is a Junkie's Faster Swing Speed Plus One Strength Grognik Axe. 
Now, if you don't necessarily like your health being low for bloodied builds, a Junkies build is a good alternative. Actually, believe it or not, the guy who managed to solo the Vault 94 raid on Expert was using a Junkies Mole Miner Gauntlet. And one of the reasons why is because he doesn't like his health being low for bloody builds. They are pretty risky, and this is a great alternative. You're just going to have to get addicted to, I know this sounds wrong, but a bunch of different drugs in the game. That's how you boost up your damage for a Junkies build. And keep in mind, certain drugs that you become addicted to actually decrease your strength. So if you are doing a melee build, you might want to watch out for those. Just tinker around a little bit with what addictions work out the best and with what addictions don't work out the best for your build. I'll be honest, I am not an expert over the build. I just know Junkies can become a pretty good build. I've seen some pretty good players utilizing it. All right, so for the sixth up on the list here, this is for all you tanky builds out there. You are going to love this weapon. As you can see here, this is a vampire's minigun, so you gain brief health regeneration when you hit an enemy. Also, it has explosive rounds on this, so bullets explode for area damage, and it has faster movement speed while aiming. But the two most important perks on this is obviously the explosive rounds and the vampire effect. That combination on a minigun makes you pretty much invincible because you'll continue to keep regenerating your health each time you're hitting an enemy. I mean, just think about that for a second. How much ammo a minigun carries and how much you can actually just spam shots. Especially in the Scorch Beast Queen. You're not going to have to worry about anything else that's attacking you you can easily focus up on the Scorch Beast Queen and keep your health regenerated. So if you're the type of person that doesn't like really using stem packs and you don't like having your health low, this is a weapon you definitely want to search for. Vampire's effect on a minigun is absolutely insane. Plus the explosive rounds makes this even more insane. Faster movement speed could be a better perk, but overall this is a very solid weapon especially when you get it modified. Now for the fifth on the list, I have for you an explosive quad ammo harpoon gun. Oh, and also it comes with plus 50 damage resistance while aiming. My buddy got lucky enough to get this from the purveyor. Sheesh, that's some serious luck. By the way, all the weapons that I am showcasing in this video, you can get as a drop from a legendary or from the purveyor. So keep that in mind. They are all still possible to get in the game. But anyways, the most important part about using this weapon is modifying it with the Fletchets mod. This modification will make it so your harpoon gun has infinite ammo. Yeah, sounds kind of crazy and it's true. And I'm not exactly sure if this is a bug within the game. You'll be able to pick up more harpoons than what you used against the enemy. And as you can see here, even after the enemy is already down, you can just continue to shoot at it and then pick up even more harpoons to stack up on your ammunition with the harpoon gun. For example here, there were four harpoons that were shot into this Scorch Beast, and now when we go up to it, as you can see, there are nine in its body that you can loot. So that's pretty insane. You have an endless amount of ammunition, and you can get this weapon to be pretty powerful, as you saw with that Scorch Beast. It went down pretty fast. You can easily stock up on caps with this just by selling other ammunition in your vending machine because you don't necessarily need it anymore. All you need are harpoons. And, well, there's an infinite amount of them with the Fletchets mod. Which, by the way, real quick, since I'm hyping up this mod so much, in case you are wanting it for yourself on your harpoon gun, you can get it over here at Watoga Shopping Plaza. Just head on over to this vendor. This vendor actually sells a lot of other modifications for weapons too, so keep that in mind. It may have something that you're looking for. As you can see though, it does sell the plan for harpoon gun fletchets, which changes the ammo type to fire a shotgun blast of harpoon fletchets. So that's why we're able to pick up multiple harpoons at a time off shooting an enemy. It's firing more at once. Okay, so fourth up on the list is an explosive bloodied handmade. Oh, and it has plus 50 damage resistance while aiming. Using this with a sneak VATS build makes you an extremely beneficial player on the battlefield. You absolutely tear through enemies. Check this out. So 
So yeah, as you can see, it shreds. If you are a rifle build, definitely consider checking out this weapon if you can get your hands on it. And another good thing is you also get a lot of modifications to choose from to put on your handmade to suit your playstyle a little more. Keep in mind that the sneak vats build goes great with this. I don't really want to explain how to do each build that I you know, bring up in this video because that would drag on this pretty long. But to keep things simple, just be looking out for perk cards that involve vats and sneak, which by the way, a lot of them are located in luck and agility. Anyways, for the third up on the list, I have for you a bloodied faster fire rate plus one agility railway rifle. Check this out. The reload is awesome for this weapon. And did you just see how fast we took out that behemoth? The railway rifle can shoot so fast if you have the automatic piston receiver. But if you manage to get that 25% faster fire rate as well, whoo, and it being bloodied, you can deal out some serious damage fast. It seriously hits like a truck. I've heard of some people getting this weapon to go up to like 500 to 700 damage per shot. And if you think about how it can hold up to 10 rail spikes and how fast it can shoot all those rail spikes, that would be some really quick 5 to 7k damage. This is very rare to come across, I will say. And I know what some of you may be thinking, is there something similar to modify on this weapon like we could with the harpoon gun to have an infinite amount of ammo? And, well, no. But the ammunition is extremely easy to make. All it requires is steel. So be sure to keep that in mind. The ammo isn't all that difficult to make. All right, so for the second on this list, I have for you a quadruple ammo capacity plus 25% faster fire rate and plus 250 damage resistance while reloading automatic Tesla rifle. This weapon is an absolute monster. First off, look how much ammo comes in this Tesla rifle. The downfall of a Tesla rifle is how fast you run out of ammo and have to reload it. This, you're starting out with 60. It takes a little while for you to have to reload this and it drains enemies. And not to mention the damage that you do with this Tesla rifle also chains to other enemies around. This has to be one of my favorite weapons on this list personally because the Tesla rifle is just a lot of fun and it's extremely unique. With this also having faster fire rate to it on top of the quadruple makes this a really, really good weapon to get your hands on. And that plus 250 damage resistance when reloading makes this even better because that's one of the annoying parts about this weapon, reloading. Some people actually prefer bloodied ones, which is understandable because I'm not gonna lie, bloodied weapons can be extremely powerful, but this weapon's combination can be just as powerful. All right, so on to the final legendary weapon that I have for you on this list. And that is the bloodied meat hook. The perks that you want to look out for with it combined with bloodied is faster swing speed or 40% more power attack damage. The preferred perk is the 40% more power attack damage. That's the one that's actually worth more. Also, if it has plus one strength too, that is the best of its kind. The reason why players want 40% more power attack damage is because of how much damage it can actually deal out against the Scorch Beast Queen. I'm not exactly sure if this is a bug with the weapon, but currently not only can you use the Gladiator perk cards to increase its damage, but it's also considered part of unarmed damage as well. So you can use Iron Fist, but most importantly, you can use Vintage Nuka Shine, which in case you don't know what Nuka Shine does, it increases unarmed damage by 100%. So that right there is going to increase your damage a lot with the Bloodied Meat Hook. Also, it increases your action point regeneration by 50%. Now this is also very important because if you go for that 40% more power attack damaged bloody meat hook, that means you can continue to do power attacks consistently without really worrying about running out of action points after you drink this Nuka Shine because it keeps regenerating it at a fast rate. Not only that, you can also take some other supplies to increase your damage as well, such as for example, Fury. Now some of you may be thinking after you drink Nuka Shine, you teleport somewhere on the map. Yeah. That is true, but the damage you are able to deal out makes it worth it. As you can see here, for example, this critical was 18,336 damage. That's a lot of damage being dealt at once. 
I've seen builds with this that are able to take out the Scorch Beast Queen in a few seconds. Seriously, it's insane. And even if you do teleport away from the effect of the Nuka Shine, you can still just simply teleport right back. And by the time you get back, hopefully the Queen hasn't been taken out quite yet, and you'll still be able to get your rewards. Because if you did drink the Nuka Shine and teleport away, you more than likely did a significant amount of damage. It's no joke. It's seriously one of the best weapon combinations that you can do right now in this game. Playing with this weapon just with bloodied, it can still be crazy good. Just because of the Nuka Shine, how much it really does help out. Also, be sure to modify it with the extra hooks mod. But yeah, that's about wrapping up this list everyone. Hopefully you found this compilation enjoyable and something in here was new to you and might have piqued your interest. I'm out of here everyone. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.